Tonight we have the pleasure of uh, hearing from John K2IZ, one of the uh, elder members of the Great South Bay Amateur Radio Club. John's been around technology for a really long time. He's a he's an old phone guy, telephone, and uh, served with the armed forces. So uh, I guess without further ado, we'll uh, we'll ask John to to step up. I I sort of corralled him because he's been talking about this nano VNA thing that I've been wondering about. And uh, hopefully he'll give us just an overview of what it, what it is, the kind of things it does. And I know he's really excited about how you hook it up to your computer. So, John, would you take it away? Thank you, W2PW here. Yeah, thanks, Press. Again, it's only the second time I run a PowerPoint. I ran it last night in front of NO2C. So if any, if I get stuck, if someone could help me. Yeah, I've been a ham since 71. 65 to 69, I was a radio man in the Navy. And when I started with the phone company, I went outside to special services. In 76, the fastest data set at the time was a 209A. The thing was about uh, three feet long, three feet deep. It weighed about 40 pounds. And that was the blazing speed of 9.6 meg. If you turn the dial, you can put two 4.8s in there. If you turn it again, you can run out mucks in four 2.4s. And basically when I left in 2010, it was like I went from the Wright Brothers Flyer to uh, uh, the SST. Anyway, Press, give me a minute. Let me uh, I'm gonna go to share screen and then I'm gonna start it, okay? Just to remind you the share screen's on the bottom and you wanna click the upper left blue ringed screen so we can see every screen you're looking at, if that's okay with you. Uh, for me to start, like I say, when I first got on the air, my first antenna was a 135-foot-long uh, NFED into a tapped LC tunable network. How did I tune it up? The guy told me, he goes, move the taps around till you get the loudest sound, start playing with it. And once you get the loudest signal, you're good. Didn't have a bridge, didn't have anything. Um... Uh, a lot of complaints in the QSTs from the 70s where there are so many articles in there that were basically professional written because if people wanted to uh, get their doctorate or something, they had to have a published article. So it was, but nowadays, uh, well, a couple of years ago, I bought that MFJ tuner and it was good. It was good. I was able to set up my beam and uh, some of my antennas, but it didn't really cover all the frequencies that you wanted. So, uh, Last year, we had a gentleman that gave a talk, uh, K3, I forget his call sign, on the Nano VHA. And for the first time in uh, 50 years, I learned how to read a Smith chart. So anyway, this is what I have. Uh, okay, can you see that? Press, screen just changed, okay. That's basically what I bought. There's so many of them available now on... Uh, Amazon, I don't know how I ended up with this one. This one went for $59. Uh, there's some on there for 160. It's, you know, whatever you want. This is what came with it. And uh, these little adapters here, they're short, open, 50 ohm termination. The thing is though, is like I say, I'm 6667. I used to be able to use three fingers to palm a basketball. One of these things in my hand is like a little tiny thing. And with my glasses and stuff, I was having trouble reading. I was having trouble understanding it. So I did a little searching around and uh, I saw this on here. PC control via nano saver. This is a downloadable program. And with it, you can actually see on your PC. Plus it shows you a ton of more stuff. Okay. If you go to the website, this is what it says. Put down here. Tells you what it does. You can read data from nano VNA. Uh, this is uh, it's not what I did last night. Display multiple chart types. So. See over here, you set everything up. And then you can display whatever charts you want. So, get 
back up. Yeah, this isn't what we were supposed to, but that's okay. First thing you got to do is the same thing. You calibrate it like you do the regular handheld one. Short, open, load, through the whole nine yards. And once you bring it up on the screen, you know, once you bring it into the computer, first thing you do is they have the calibration test. I might have this a little bit of out of order. First thing you do is really you should uh, see what it says right here. Com, nano VNA. First thing you do is you actually uh, you know, uh, hook it up to that. Where your computer recognizes what COM port it is. So in this case here, I'm on COM6 on my laptop. This is the step through on the calibration chart, the short, the open. So instead of reading it in your hand or trying to read it, it's now on the screen. And you go through, you do all your calibration, and uh, I'm still trying to figure There's a way you can save all these calibrations for the next time you do it. Now, once you get it calibrated and everything, you want to hook it up, you go to sweep settings. And again, just this me just playing around with it, I found it on my own. You go to sweep settings for what you want to do. Okay, let me get this down. And also, you expand the display. So you see up here, marker one, frequency, impedance. Series L, Series C, Parallel R, Parallel X. And then over here, it reads your Viswar, Return Loss, Quality Factor. Again, that's more stuff than I ever get, get into. I'm just looking to see how's the antenna. That's all I care about. Next thing here, you get down under your sweep settings and you display the band. The only thing this doesn't cover is 220. I think it goes up to 23 centimeters. From 160 meters, 23 centimeters. So again, you select the band. In this case here, you know those arrow uh, satellite antennas? I had uh, broken off an element. And I got a replacement for it. So I says, oh, let's see how it looks. So first I selected the two meter band. You get down here, which is time domain reflector, uh, reflectometry. When this pops up, I chose, I'm using RG58AU. I had the thing hanging from my ceiling here in the basement. You choose the type of cable that you hooked up to, in this case here, RG50AU, 54, foam, belt, and whatever, the whole nine yards. Once I got through, this is my settings for the two meter part of the RO antenna. Okay, up here, started at 144 meg, center was 146, stopped at uh, 148 meg. You see the visual right here, and you set the markers over here. See the red, the green, the blue, Do whatever color you want. That antenna, for where I want it, goes up to just a little uh, 1.5 to 1 which I'm in the satellite portion of the band, okay? It's still good up into the regular two meter portion of the band. Okay, it says the Viswar 1.4.39, return loss, whatever. I didn't expand this one out, I should have, sorry about that. And then, uh, oh, this one here. Then I switched over again, going back to um, sweep settings, put it on the 440 portion. This is the 440 portion of the arrow antenna that you go out there, you wave around in the sky, press, we had one guy, remember him? He was uh, up on top of the Anvil train station and somebody called the police and said he was shooting rockets at the train. God. <laughs> He's standing there holding the arrow antenna like this, and somebody says, he's shooting rockets at the trains. Yeah, okay, <laughs> fine. Whatever. You see the SWR? 
That's flat right across where you need it. Okay, well below 1.5. You go over here, and again, if I had spanned it out, the, I, I didn't do it. Here's the visoir for the first part, second part, third part. Okay, and then if you expand on the other side, it would show you how much gain, how much loss, the whole nine yards. This one here, that's K9 uh, TAX, I believe it's called, he's got a J pole antenna, two and 440 for an emergency antenna. It's made out of uh, open wire feeder. I just hung it from my ceiling uh, here in the basement. It wasn't even spread out right. Okay, and again, I sweeped it for two meters. Not being hooked up in the right setting. Again, it was all coiled up and everything. I'm still a little over two. There and there. Okay. And then you look on the charger, and again, it's all right in front of you instead of you know, having to guess what it is. That's what I love about this. And then when I went to uh, the 440 portion, again, I went into sweep settings, changed it to 440. All right. I'd already had it set up for the uh, RG58. And again, not being set up right. Again, just hanging from the ceiling here, all coiled up. It's still not that bad for use. I bet you if I hung it up outside, it'd be even better. But again, it you know, shows you the visual of the whole nine yards. It starts to, again, if it was stretched out up in the air, and then I don't have it, but uh, one of the last things I did was I took one of those little Nagoya antennas off the Baofeng, and I hooked it up, I had to lay it on the desk. I said, wow, this is terrible. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. It's a vertical antenna. As soon as I held it up in my hand, flat, right below 1.51. Do your own tests on it. But again, uh, well, that's, that's really exactly it. what I was what I was hoping to find out about. You know, I've got a box of rubber duckies, and they're not labeled. How do I know, you know, even what band they are? Can I put them on this device, and it'll tell? Can it sweep zero to a thousand? It'll say, oh yeah, this is a four forty, or this is a three ninety, or this is a two twenty, or this is a one forty. Uh there's a way you can do the whole sweep, but again, I'm not interested in that press. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I just went through and said, okay, I know this is two. It doesn't do 220, so I couldn't use the uh, tri-band antenna that I have for the uh, B-Tech. Here on Long Island, in this area here, thank you, Press. We have two meters, we have 220, we have 440. Okay, we have an outstanding crew that maintains them. So for me here, uh, a lot of other places, you know, Who's got 220 anymore? We do. We use it. Okay. So so this device actually omits 220 for coverage, but does below and above? You got it. <clears throat> Interesting. Didn't know that. that. That's what I say. If you download the program and you go to the sweep settings, you'll see it. So this program, is this program put out by the nano VNA manufacturer? Or is it no, a third party that does it? It's freeware. Okay. Uh, and do you, do you know where you find it? I forget exactly where I downloaded that press, but hold on a second. Nano VNA Saver. Saver. So it looks like nanovna.com. It's uh, easy to remember. No, it's not nano. Yeah, okay, it might be. But yeah. again, you, you just go on there, press, do a click, do a search. Again, I'm sorry I didn't write it down. Well, Brian's actually putting a link to the software in the chat to everyone. So thank you. That's very helpful. All right. But again, you read all the stuff it does. I'm sorry, it's not bigger. Reading data from the nano VNA. Again, for me to sit there with my reading glasses on, try and hold it in my big paw and, you know, go through, my hands are starting to shake. My arthritis is getting worse. I was a CW operator. I worked outside for many years. You know, my hands are all starting to fold up. But again, uh, averaging, you know, you just all the stuff that it does. Displaying, so, yeah, sorry, go ahead. So, John, what you're saying is when you use your little laptop PC or whatever you have over there, 
the actual registers that stores the settings are inside that BNA? Press, does that sound right? You're really I actually think it's probably in the configuration of the software. There's probably an initialization file that the software stores those profiles. It reads it out. Uh, Mario, it I'm make sorry, more that's, sense. Not, that's not my heavy part there. I'm, I'm no, sorry. that's okay. No, no, no problem. It, it would make more sense that the instrument is just providing the raw data and the software does all the heavy lifting. Gotcha. Yeah, time domain uh, function, measurement of cable length. Again, when I plugged it in, I was using a th uh, three-foot length of uh, RG58. With the that and the additional stuff that was on the antenna, it said, you have 3.9 feet of RG58 on there, and here's the reading for it. It's good, no bumps, no flats, no nothing. So, yeah, one of the things I, I've learned is that when you're hooking up an instrument looking to measure a, an antenna, it's critical that you account for the cable both in its small amount of loss and its other properties that would that the instrument needs to take into account. So if you took an antenna and screwed it right on the VNA or versus at the other end of 10 feet of coax, that same antenna will read differently until you declare the coax. So it sounds like in this uh, nano VNA saver software, in one of those screens I saw, you had a drop down that picked the type of coax Probably the amount of it. Yes, what, what, what they what they got to remember? I got a first phone. I got an extra. Okay. My thing in the phone company was, I was a field checking what they call special services data teletype computer. Okay, you'd be amazed how important it is to check the loss. Yeah, the cable. Okay. For example, we had a guy that lived two miles from the Northport Central Office. This is going back about 20 years. He could dial into his bank with the touch tone pad. But once he tried to use his touch tone pad to access his account, it didn't work. And everybody tried everything. Finally, they said, they sent me out there with my Hewlett Packard. And again, Technology changed. My Hewlett Packard transmission impairment measuring set, TIMS. All right. What I did was first thing I did was I removed the customer's wire from the uh, cable. I called a special number in Northport that sent me a thousand cycles at zero. Okay. I had a 2 dB loss in the cable from there to the CO. Now I called another number in a different central office and it sent me a thousand, negative five. Okay. Now I did a complete freak run, which in data is from 300 to 3000 cycles. Thousand cycles, good. 1200, yeah. bit of a drop. 1400, major drop. 1600, 20 dB loss in the cable. 1800, 28 dB loss in the cable. 2000 was starting to come back up, and then at uh, 2400, it was back to normal. Wow. What happened was the cable that they were using was a reused, what they called a trunk cable that used to go between central offices. They used to put load pots in there to, you know, uh, you know keep, I forget the exact definition, but the load pot was causing a 20 dB hole between 14 and 2,400 cycles. And for those of you that know multi-freak, between 14 and 2,400 cycles, that's where all your information is. And it was so far down in the mud, the bank computer couldn't read it. Makes sense. What did we do? We went to the old lady's house next door. She still had a rotary phone. <laughs> we checked her cable. She was in a different underground. Flat. Swapped them. Swapped. Have a nice day. We're gone. So does anybody have any uh, questions for John on the nano VNA itself and what you've learned? Well, I say, uh, press, I, the one thing with me is I was always a, what's the word they use? Self-starter. Yeah. I got an order one time to install a data line from the engineers. Install per the BSP and let us know how you get it to work. Okay. Yeah. Go, 
basically I went out there. I had to figure out the and everything. But I told him, okay, this is how I got it to work. Instead of sitting back, I said, oh, I don't know. Anytime something new came out, we were always. Yeah, you just got to tear it in and figure out. What's this do? All right. We went so what, 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 what single thing surprised you the most about the VNA when you, when you started using it? Not so much handheld, but using it uh, with the computer was all the measurements are displayed on the screen that you can read and understand it. There's more there than I'm ever going to use. Okay. Now, can you save this information that you're reading out of the instrument and files? Yeah. Yeah, you can. Okay. You can. Um, again, here's the other part here. I mean, like I say, uh, that uh, general we had, the case, I get his call, he put out a quiz, 20 questions, and uh, I had actually gone to the uh, uh, start reading. But he yeah. was the first person to ever explain a Smith chart to me. I used to look at yeah. the old QSDs and say, this is nice. What does it mean? Because Smith charts wasn't my thing. Yeah, we had somebody here talk about Smith charts a, a few months ago, and it was oof, above my pay grade. But the thing is, he explained it nicely to us. It was kind of yeah. like when I went to school for my first class license. Uh, the instructor started talking about square roots and this and this. He turned around, and he realized he was getting deer in the headlights look from every one of us in the class. We were all veterans. So, he goes, do you guys know what I'm talking about? We said, no. So he spent a week explaining how to do square roots and all the formulas involved for our first class, second class and first class FCC radio telephone licenses. So what would you say is that, what would you say is the best ability that this nano VNA has? And what would so, you say could, could use an improvement? Uh, improvement, I have no idea. Whoever wrote this program ought to be put up for sainthood. <laughs> especially since it's freeware. The thing I like the most is I can sit there and look at the simple things. Uh, again, my first antenna, 135 feet. All right. Uh, about 12 years ago, I had up a uh, center-fed dipole. Worked great on 80, stunk on 40, and then Ed came over, ADC. Yeah. He had his meter. He says, oh, look at this, John. You've got 60% of your power coming back to you on 40 meters. That's why you ain't getting out. Oh. That's why I have an off-center fed antenna up there. Off-center fed covers uh, 80, 40. Co sorry, covers everything. Once in a while, if it gets wet, I might have to use the external tuner on uh, 30 meters. But every other band, perfect. Yeah, I got one of his off-centers. They work good. Does anybody have any uh, any questions on what yeah, we're going over tonight? I was just going to mention something. So, John, I have a Comet antenna analyzer. And one of the features that the Comet antenna analyzer doesn't have is to be able to study the cable. Uh, the MFJ one, I believe, does. Uh, it allows you to analyze the, the cable that's connected to the antenna as well. I understand one thing, Mario. I am not knocking any manufacturer. Oh, okay. Well, anyway. I mean, it's, I mean, it's, it, it's like... Here on Long Island, we have no ham hardware stores, right, Press? No. We used to have Arrow. We used to have Harrison, the house that Ham's built, where you go in there and put your hands on the radio. Like Lafayette. <laughs> Laugh a lot radio? Yeah. Uh, right now, nobody wants to come to Long Island because one of the guys told me from Jersey, he goes, before I leave my house, I'm $200 in the hole. Yeah. From tolls, <laughs> gas, personnel, meals. He said, and then it's got to be indoor because I can't put it out there because it rains. I'll ruin my inventory. That's yep. the problem we have here. So again, why do I have a Kenwood 590? Because I like Kenwoods. I've had a 530. I've got a 480, 590. The only way we can do a pick and choose on radios out here is uh, my next door neighbor. He's gone now, K2TV. For those of you that don't know, our antennas are for, were 45 feet apart. We could legally run a multi-multi in a contest. K2TV only needed one country for his final, okay, and that was North Korea. Before he left, he had a letter signed in my blood that if North Korea ever came on the air, 
I would turn and unplug everything off of my house until he got it in the log. I wouldn't even look at it. I wouldn't even turn on my TV if it meant that. <laughs> Again, Bob is 78. He spent his ham career chasing DX. He used to get the phone calls at 2 o'clock in the morning. It was a two-ringer. If the phone rang twice and then stopped, he went upstairs, turned on the radio. Okay, this country that you need is on the air. He's on this frequency. My wife well, would have my wife would have shot me if I did that. The only time she wanted to call me in the middle of the night was for me getting a call out. Well, I guess if we don't have any more questions, uh, we have John for a few minutes. We've got the room until eight. Say one thing. I, I'm not <laughs> knocking MFJ. I'm not knocking out. I'm whatever. It's unfortunately for us here, we have to read to understand. And once I saw... Uh, uh, This little feature, PC control via nano saver. Look at that. I don't have to sit there and squint. So that cable is a USB-C cable, and it comes with the nano VNA to charge it, so it'll plug right into your laptop, right? Yep. I'm, I'm glad I watched because I didn't know that. Well, we got something done tonight. Okay. I, <laughs> I'm sorry that? I can't bring up small stuff there, but... Yeah, it's got all this stuff, you know, all stuff, but again, the cable comes with it. Um, got the nano, got the cable, got, I, now i got to get the software. That, that might make it all work. So, yeah, the software, uh, Brian put a link in there in the chat. <coughs> oh, look at that. Okay. That's the Smith chart right there, where this thing here says that purple line right there. That's good. I think that's a short, that's an open, whatever. But again, I just turned 74. My eyes aren't what they used to be. And to sit there and try, but, you know, and all the little tiny stuff up here. Okay? Yeah. Whereas you could bring it up on the screen, Vizwar, loss, time domain, the whole nine yards. See down here, it says, uh, with the start... <laughs> kilohertz stop you go there so again press you can set it up to sweep the whole place i think okay. you just got again rtfm read the yeah there, there is that problem is there's no manual on the chinese junk so that's why we have people like you well thank you john i really appreciate it um if there's any questions we'll uh, we'll take them otherwise we'll we'll let yeah. the crew go back to general chat thank you very much i learned a lot about this Hey, so why, is it, why is it say it's uh it's an honor. Press Thank how many you. people are on here? I, oh, uh 46. Okay. All over the country? You yep, all over the country, all over the world. And you do rank among some of the higher numbers of speaker uh, presentations, uh recipients, whatever I'm saying. Does somebody yell hey press? Press, I don't care about that. What I care about is the fact that I'm humbled to be speaking before a group like this from all over the United States and the world, and just to be able to you know, share the knowledge from here. I'm just trust me, I am humbled. All we right. had well, a we'll total of 56 people at any given time. Oh, wow, we peaked out at 56, that's pretty good. A press, again, I you know, I sit here with my head bowed in the humility oh, to be able down. to address all these people. <laughs> press, well, what you do, I can't even come close to it. That's why I thank you and uh, QGZ every time you're on the air. <laughs> <laughs> thank you john thank you so much 